how can God appoint a disbeliever as a chosen one? Because it's not your choice, it's not your affiliation, it's your nature. Your nature is to disbelieve in God? <laughs> exactly. So how can God choose? But wait, sorry. Don't touch me. I'm sorry, sorry. Okay. But atheist, so atheist, according to you, destined to be evil people. No, atheist can be good people. Don't put words in my mouth. Atheist, no, I said, Messiah is appointed by God, prophet is appointed by God, messengers are appointed by God, messengers are appointed by God. How can God appoint a disbeliever to represent him? Because it's, it's your actions and nature that define you, not your... Uh... Okay, let me, let me give you an analogy. Imagine your company has a policy of appointing only people who are hard work. But Muhammad wasn't a you know what? I don't Muhammad think we can have this Muhammad conversation. Muslim. He became a Muslim, Muhammad. Muhammad? Yeah, he wasn't a Muslim to begin with. That's why God appointed him. Yeah, the same with like Cyrus, right? But Cyrus remained a disbeliever. Even after being a Messiah. How do you know? How do you know? Because look at the history. Cyrus' history, the reason the Jewish people reject him is because his history shows that he was a disbeliever. You know, there is a... The, if you go to the British Museum, there is a, what do you say, they call it the, um, it's, it's actually an evidence to show Cyrus, uh, he's got a little um, script, and this shows his belief, and according to that, that is, this is empirical evidence, that Cyrus wasn't a believer in God, he talks about other gods, yes, okay, so this, wait, wait, this shows us that he wasn't the true messiah, or chosen one of God. Because a Messiah means chosen by God, actually. It an appointed God one. Anointed, yeah, an, an anointed one, one who is chosen by God to be anointed. So there is a clear distinction between a true Messiah. By the way, do you know, the, you, you know in Islam we call, uh, uh, sorry, we, we call the fake Messiah, the, uh, the uh, Dajjal, yeah. Dajjal, yes. Know it, yeah. You know why he's called the Messiah? and the, Sorry, he's called a fake Messiah? I know, because he know. will claim, say, he'll claim to be think, a Messiah. Do you think it's moral that the story of Dajjal says that every tree will tell you, behind, no, every stone, stone will tell you behind which tree a Jew is hiding? You think that's moral? What is moral? That the stones will tell you behind which tree a Jew will be hiding you so you can kill him. That's what it says. If you believe, do you believe the trees can talk? No, but it says in the end time prophecy of... Yeah. of but do you believe that the trees can talk? Well, if, you, you can say that if God wants them to... Lady, talk. trust me, if this tree started talking, you'll believe everything it says. You know why? Because you will see a miracle in front of you. That, that's, <laughs> that, that's moral to say that the, the tree will tell you before, behind, so you can kill Jews. By the way, are you a Christian? No. You, what, what is your faith? Well, I'm not Jewish, but I believe in Judaism. You're not Jewish, but you believe in Judaism. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Why does it make sense? Oh, you mean uh, you were not born a Jew? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but I haven't converted either. Okay. Wait, I need to actually look for my friend for a second last time. Oh, as soon as we came Judaism, you had to go. What happened? I can stay bound to Do you think it's moral to kill children? Um, of course not. Well, the Bible, the Old Testament, the Torah is full of it. No, 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 you don't understand the commandment. <laughs> the commandment where it says that you are, it actually says that you cannot kill a child, you have to take it into a court. And what it did wasn't the giving you the um, ability to kill your child, but actually took away the authority from parents to kill their children. Okay, Moses killed the Midianites because God sh sanctioned him. No, not because he was beating up some. If you let me finish, lady, okay? According to Moses' story, yes? Yeah. Let's say let's say there were people who are disbelievers. Yeah. Yes? Is it okay to kill them? You say you, it is. I'm asking you. Of course it's not. But in Moses' story, it was by God to kill them. It was because then they were tried, there was a like hostile towards them because they were So the just now you said it's not okay to kill them if they're disbelievers. No, but what the Surah 929 says. And why are you going to Surah 929 when you cannot because answer it, your own Torah? Because then they were in a, in a desert, they were in a hostile environment. Okay, is it okay to kill a child? No, of course it's not. But in Moses' story, it says to kill everyone, including children. Yes, oh, except okay. the virgin, except the virgins. So in right. in but the story, it happened once in a history. No, no, not once. I can show you so okay. many exa so but many here, examples. Oops. I didn't realize there's a little doggy. Is that yours? Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. War is ugly. War is ugly. This is God commanding Moses to kill. Yeah, but it's a situation. If of you war. let me finish, yeah. let me finish. In a war, okay. Even in a war, if there were little infants, infants, yeah. Do you know what infants are? Yeah. Infants are less than two. He thinks you're stupid. No, you're not stupid. Infants are less than two years old. In a war, imagine, if, so let me finish. Do you believe that, like, if you're not going to let me finish, yeah. there's no point having in a Judaism, conversation. There is, like, it takes so long to speak, that's why. 
If you don't want to listen, you can always go away. You have no choice. Yeah. Which they take, you but, take but if you don't listen, you don't have to. You so don't have to I, like I didn't to, call you. Yo. I would actually like to know what was the situation of that. In any situation, is it okay to kill an infant? But the, there is 613 commandments in the Torah, and there is no commandment to uh, actively engage in war and kill people you disagree with. Is there any logical sense in killing an infant in any circumstance? Yes there, or no? It's a there, simple question. There are historical. If you ask me, I'll say no. You cannot what, kill what a child. The what about the post wait, 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 wait. What about the post and a postate and a child is big difference. A child. No, it's a child. murder. It's murder of a human being. Wait That's, a minute. In the by the way, it's in Deuteronomy to kill apostates. <laughs> In your Torah. No, it says those who um, engage in inciting others to stray from uh, worshiping God. Which is apostates. No. Leave, uh, no? Leaving your religion voluntarily versus... I don't think you have read your Torah. Okay. okay, let's read Deuteronomy about apostates. Shall we? You have to go? I was looking for Yeah, that's fine. Apostates is in Deuteronomy. So, anyway, I mean... Apostates are not killed. They are killed. I, I'm telling okay. you, in the Bible, look apostates the, are killed. When you look at commands, but you can't just look at the command. You have to also look at the reality of the world. Is Jewish people don't kill each other. Muslims do. Actually, Jewish people have been killing each other for a long time. Very interesting. You've been, your Bible is full of killing women and children. You're a fool. But, I just said, so, so what about the electricity in Gaza and the switch system there? What about like that? You know, Israel was built on the land of the Canaanites who were commanded to be, by your God to be killed everyone. Yeah, because they, then it's okay. They, but they, as long as it's in Israel, by the Israelis, it's okay. Because wow. They, they were, they were, I think you are, your friend is calling you. Maybe sacrificing their children to Molech. So kill them. So kill them, yeah? That's okay. If they were sacrificing that children, so your God, yeah. who's supposed to be the moral no, high ground, no, tells him no. Now you, Moses, go and kill them. In Judaism, murderers are killed out to be killed. Well, your Bible is full of murder of women and children. So don't teach me about, you, about it. I've got nothing on the Quran and Hadith. <laughs> you see, when it came to your book, you don't want to, uh, you want to give say, reasons. But then my friends will, my friends well, go to your friend then. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, you can go. No problem. So Deuteronomy, Numbers 21, sorry, Numbers 31. Uh, in, in Exodus, in Deuteronomy, all this. Here, for example, there's a, there's a chapter in, uh, f sorry, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, it says go and kill the Amalekites. The Amalekites were actually the, uh, they were the enemy of the Israelites. So what the Israelites, what they did, the Amalekites did to Israelites as a vengeance, as, as, uh, as taking revenge, their God, the, is the God of Israel, commanded Saul to go and massacre Yes, kill every male, every female, every child, every infant and not to even spare the donkeys and the cattle and the oxen and the camels. You have to destroy all life, in fact. This is the reality of their faith. And then they tell us about, uh, about apostasy and about killing. Yes, in Islam, there is war. There is no doubt about that. But war only when it's justified. When it is, and even in the war, the Prophet ﷺ commanded us against killing women and children. Yes, against destroying the places of worship, against destroying the uh, people within the places of worship, not to cut down the crops, not to kill, not to kill the animals, none of that. Yes, but in their book, in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy, in Numbers, uh, in Numbers 31, in in First Samuel 15:3, there is a clear injunction, a clear sanction by God Almighty, their God in their Bible, to kill every woman, every female, every child, every infant, and not and not to spare even the animals. I mean the donkeys and the camels and, and the oxen. This doesn't make sense. Yes, in Islam it says that even after, even during a war, when the when the enemy, if they come and they want to make peace to you, then accept that treaty, the treaty of peace, and do not just end it there. But you have to now escort them to a place of safety. Yes, this is in chapter 60, verse number eight, very clearly in the Quran. So even we have rules of engagement during a war long before the Geneva Convention. Yes, long before that. Alhamdulillah. We don't just go killing left, right and center whomever we wish. That is un-Islamic. So people like ISIS, people like the KKK who go and kill on prejudice just because they happen to be disbelievers from their faith, they have nothing to do with us, with, with, the, with Islam. These people are in fact killing more Muslims than the non-Muslims. So they are our number one enemies. So we do not consider them to be following the true path of Quran and Sunnah. But anyone who challenges that Islam is this and Islam is that, in particular, the Christians and the Jews, I think they should peek into their own Bible before they come to us. 
Yes? Do not throw stones if you live in a glass house. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.